Good morning, my name is Alan Mayer and I am leading us through 365 days of Bible study. Uh, at the moment we are looking at the period of the exile in Babylon and particularly on the ministry of the prophet Ezekiel. Ezekiel gives hope to his people and he introduces us to the idea of the Good Shepherd. Here I'm reading from Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 to 15, and I'll just turn you round so that you can see the text. I am Yahweh, your King. I'm telling you now that I will personally look for my sheep, and I'll take care of them just like shepherds do. They look after sheep that once were scattered, but have now been brought back together. I intend to bring them back from all the different places where they were dispersed on that dark, disastrous day. I'll get them from the foreign lands and gather them together. I'll bring them back to their own country, to the mountains and streams of Israel and I'll feed them in pleasant pastures. I'll let them graze in safety on mountain meadows and the valleys and green pastures of Israel. I will personally be the shepherd of my own sheep. I'll find a place for them to rest, and I, Yahweh, your sovereign, mean what I say. Yesterday, I spoke about Ezekiel's new covenant. Here it is again. Jesus knew Ezekiel chapter 34 very well and identified with it strongly. If you have the time and read the whole chapter, you will see clearly how New Testament it is. Ezekiel, of course, had to begin where he was in exile in Babylon, amongst a defeated people. He was trying hard to give the people some good news. But all they could think of was their recent history and the disaster that had befallen them and their culture. God had shown Ezekiel in chapter 33, verses 30 to 33, a people who spoke nicely to each other but really it was greed and self-preservation that was motivating them, and they were regarding this new prophet, Ezekiel, as just light entertainment. They needed a change of heart. Before he launched into his description of Yahweh, the Good Shepherd, Ezekiel reminded them how poorly they had been served by their former national leaders, who had not cared for the welfare of the flock of Israel. Not only had they neglected to care for the poor, sick and needy, they had actually treated them with cruelty. This was the ruin of the nation and a major cause of the flock of Israel scattering to the four winds. Those who hadn't been forced into exile in Babylonia had become refugees elsewhere and many had perished. And then he compared these dreadful leaders with God the Good Shepherd. God had a future for them, back home in safety, peace and prosperity. There remains in this chapter deep criticism of any in the flock who hurt or demean others to their own profit and advantage, the image of a day of judgment, when the greedy are punished and the weak are saved, is to re-emerge in the teachings of Jesus. And also in this chapter, there is the promise of a worthy king like David my servant, he says. The early Christians quickly took this promise to apply to Jesus, of course. Another image given to us by this remarkable prophet that the early Christians loved comes tomorrow, the image of resurrection. I look forward to sharing that with you tomorrow.